Magandang, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Alleluia! And welcome to our Wednesday, Workout Wednesday po. And today, let's just gonna praise, let's dance, let's rejoice and celebrate for our God is good. Alleluia! Woo! Yes, Lord, you are good. Therefore, we will gonna sing joy. Turn my morning into dancing And I can smile again For I have joy Whoa. Let the celebration begin Make a joyful noise on to Him Come on everybody Let's give Him praise For He is good You have given me a joy that won't stop and will never leave so i will praise you with gladness for you are good come on church let's sing with joy in our hearts you turn it all around where i was earthing as lord now i'm rejoicing in your love i'm found because i joy Whoa. you took away my pain you took away my pain you turned my morning into dancing I can smile again but I have joy Whoa. let the celebration begin make a joyful noise on to him come on everybody let's Give Him praise for He is good. Yes, Lord, You are good. You have given me a joy that won't stop and will never leave. So I will praise You with gladness for You are good. Yes, Lord, You have given me a joy that won't stop and will never leave. So I will. Praise you with gladness For you are good Oh, for you are good Yes, Lord You turn my sadness into gladness You turn my sorrow into joy And now I'm singing and I'm dancing And now I'll shout for joy You turn my sadness into gladness You turn my sorrow to joy and now i'm singing and i'm dancing and now i shout for joy you turn my sadness into gladness you turn my sorrow into joy and now i'm singing and i'm dancing and now i shout for joy you have given me a joy that won't and will never leave so i will praise you with gladness for you are good you have you have given me a joy that won't stop and will never leave so i will praise you with gladness for you are good you have you have given me a joy that won't stop and will never leave so i will praise you with gladness for you are good for you are good yes you are good lord 
For you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are good. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, indeed, Lord, you turn our sadness into gladness, O oh Lord. And you turn our sorrow into joy, Lord God. Because you are good. You are good. Yes, Lord, you are good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so today, Lord God, we continue to declare, Lord, we continue to shout that you are good, oh Lord. That you are good in our lives, Lord. And so it is right to celebrate, Lord. It is right to rejoice, for you are good. It is right to have this peace in our heart because you are good. Yes, Lord, you are good. Yes, Jesus. Oh, you are good. Yes, you are good. Yes, Lord, you are good. Come on, church. Let's just say that Jesus is good, that the Lord is good.
name be glorified in our midst. May your name be lifted up, Panginoon. And God, we pray that may you visit, Lord, our brothers and sisters who are with us tonight, that every one of us, Lord, may feel your presence, Panginoon, sa gabing ito. Salamat, Panginoon, and we offer you everything. We bring back all the glory and honor and praises. And to your name alone, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Isang napakagandang gabi po muli sa ating lahat. And we welcome you once again in our WOW Fellowship Workout Wednesday! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Sa lahat ng kasama po namin sa gabi ito, maligayang Wednesday night. And we welcome you once again. This is a night that we can again work out our faith. And as we continue po our series in our in family, For tonight, we are now in part 6 of our series. Ayan, hallelujah. Praise God, napaka-ganda po ng ating topic sa ating WOW Fellowship. And we hope na every Wednesday po ay nakatutok po tayo sa ating page. We have our WOW Fellowship every Wednesday night as we tackle things, other things na hindi po natin napapag-usapan sa ating Sunday preachings and even in our cell groups. We have these specific topics every Wednesday night and ngayon nga po ay magpapatuloy tayo sa ating family series and we are now in part 6. At kung nakita niyo po sa ating title ngayon, sa ating uh, live, I, we have this title, I Choose to Forgive. Ayan, medyo ano siya, uh, Um, nakaka-excite and at the same time, ano kaya itong mapupulot na naman nating aral sa topic na ito. So stay tuned po sa gabing ito as we welcome, as we enjoy the presence of the Lord, as we receive the word, let us all take and receive our portion. Now why may take home po tayong lahat sa gabing ito. And now we welcome our teacher, preacher for tonight, our dearest pastora Maricar Pugina. We welcome you all and it's nice to see you tonight as we continue in our series about family and we're always so glad to see you online and on site sa patuloy po natin na pagdi-discover kung paano po natin lalong mapasaya, lalo pong mapalalim ang ang ating pag-ibig at relasyon sa ating mga pamilya. So congratulations to all, to everyone who's watching right now. It means that you care for your ma- family and you want your family to be blessed. That's why you are with us sa oras na ito. And you know, we've been thinking last week ay papalitan na po natin yung series natin. But we have seen how the people uh, receive this series about family every Wednesday. At mat- maganda po yung mga response. And I see parents tagging their children in in our workout Wednesday. And so that marami po tayong mga kababayan that even they are working as OFW abroad, I they can get connected with their children in the Philippines through our Workout Wednesday and that they can be able to, to uh, deliver their hearts, deliver po yung, yung nais po din nilang imensahe sa kanilang mga anak and the children can get to understand the hearts of the parents and the parents can get to understand their children because of our, our series. Kaya naman po, ay nagagalak po tayo. We know that this is God. And in this time of pandemic, in this time of quarantine, ay magpapatuloy po ang series ng pamilya. Dahil po alam ko na importante ang pamilya sa Panginoon. And especially in this time, I believe God wants to deal with His family. God wants to deal with your family and my family because God always wants the tree of life to grow in each one's home. Kaya naman po, we welcome you. Kaya naman po, we welcome you and as we continue to have our series today and we entitled it, I Choose to Forgive. Bakit kaya? We've been talking about conflicts, we've been talking about communicating ourselves, we've been talking about how we need to express ourselves, but eventually in our family lives, madalas at araw-araw, minsan po ay mad- And, uh, ano, minsan, madalas po nakakaroon ng conflict at hindi po natin maiwasan yan sa buhay ng mag-asawa, sa buhay ng mga magulang at kanilang mga anak, sa mga biyanan o kanila lang yung topic namin. Di ba? Even in our workplaces, in whatever organization or whatever group that we belong in, I definitely, there will always be conflict. 
Because you know, as the, as the Lord brings life, the enemy will come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Especially relationship. Because God has this amazing uh, purpose for family. And you know, God wants our family to be blessed. But the enemy will try its best to destroy it. Kaya naman po, in the family, there will always be conflicts. Diba? Madali po tayong ma-offend in our family. In just a simple word, in just a simple gesture, yung sinabihan ka at hindi ka gumalaw, they get easily be offend offended. Diba? That's why conflicts arise in a family. So today, before we start, again, let's have this five minutes time that you can share uh, with one another. Uh, what, what were the... Uh, experience we had, yung conflict na talagang nag-away kayo magkapatid, maybe, nag-away kayo ng, ng magulang nyo. How, how did this conflict uh, went or kung paano po siya nangyari at paano nyo po na-resolve kung na-resolve man yan. Okay? So, I want you to, to uh, share one, uh, two by two na share your, your experience how did you feel? Bakit ganito yung nangyari? Uh, and then, yeah. How was the experience? And were you able to resolve it? So, share. Five minutes. Yung pinaka-memorable na away. <laughs> Ninyo siguro. Or away mo sa ibang tao. It's, it's up to you. With our friends online, you can also share. Kung may kasama po kayo nanonood ngayon.
Okay na? Ayan. Parang marami silang gustong i-share. Okay, time is up. Ayan. So, nareminis nyo ba yung mga memorable moments nyo? Or baka yung iba sa inyo, bago lang, fresh yung conflicts ninyo? Marami tayong gustong i-share, ya? Kasi kung may isang marami po tayo at mayaman tayo sa pamilya ay conflicts. Mga awayan, ya? Mga awayan na nagdudulot ng lamat, ng relasyon. Mga awayan na nagdudulot po ng world war, <laughs> ng cold war sa, sa within the family, mga conflicts na minsan po ay umaabot ng isang araw, one week, minsan yung iba. No, because of the conflict, nawala na lang at namatay na lang yung isa, that they were not able to reconcile. But as conflicts emerge through words or one word that we say, minsan, uh, when we were young, sasabihan kasi kami ng gago, parang ganun. Minsan, we, we, we've been hurt and we, we hold on to that. But we thank God because there is always a way out sa Panginoon. Amen? When there is conflict, when there is hurts, there is fight within the family, there is always way out in God. And also with words, we can be reconciled. And how, what is that word? Is that I forgive you. Yeah? So that's why our topic sa araw na ito is I choose to forgive. So it, We will also talk about the story in the Old Testament because it all goes way back in the, the, the book of Genesis. And we'll be talking about the story of one man in the Bible and he's called Esau. At kung paano din po nakaroon ng conflict sa kanilang pamilya. And in the time of, of Esau, uh, dumating po sa point that his father Isaac is about to die. And it's always the custom of the Israelites to pass on the blessing yeah, to their children, especially to the firstborn child. At dahil po dyan, tinawag po ni Isaac ang kanyang anak na si Esau as the firstborn in the family. And he says, my child, bring me a game kill and uh, ano yan? manghuli ka ng, ng pwedeng katayin and prepare a food that I would I want. Okay? At so, kinuman po niya ang kanyang panganin na anak to go and bring him a game so that he can bless him after the meal. But because the mother heard about this, the younger child conspired with the mother to trick the older brother to get the blessing from the older brother. And this is a very known story of Jacob. And we know that Jacob is a very uh, dito? cunning man. And he tricked his brother. Yeah? In the beginning, not just once but twice, ay naloko po niya ang kanyang kapatid. First was in the birthright when he gave the porridge, the, the, the food sa kanyang kapatid. As sinabi niya, bago kita pakakainin, bigay mo mo ng birthright mo sa akin. And because... Esau was very hungry. He gave him the birthright. And at the end, even to the blessing, the end, yung blessing na talaga na kanyang tatay before po ito mamamatay, Jacob, again, he tricked his older brother and he took the blessing from his older brother. And this, what happened is that it brought yung very, very long conflict between Esau and Jacob. And it took them 20 years. Na kung saan po, after Esau found out what happened, na binless po na kanyang tatay si Jacob, you know, inantay po niya. He, was, he has this thought in his mind, in his heart. After he mourns on the death of his father, he's going to kill Jacob. Papatay niya talaga si Jacob sa sobrang na-hurt siya, sobrang na, uh, 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 nagoyo po siya na kanyang kapatid na dalawang beses. And he really was hurt. He really has this filled, he was filled with hate. Kaya po, pinlano niyang patayin ang kanyang kapatid. That's why Jacob has to flee and go away from their house and flee for his life. Kaya po, dun po nagsimula ang kanilang away. 
and it took him it took them 20 years to settle this conflict. At dito po natin makikita sa topic natin and how this 20 years na conflict ay na resolve. And we we'll let us look at how Esau also deal with the problem. Because if we were Esau, if you were Esau, okay, that was the time that your brother tricked you, yung pamilya mo na dapat nakakaintindi sa yung pamilya mo na dapat trusted mo, siya po yung mismong nanloko sa iyo. So it's something na ang hirap tanggapin. And then later on in that time, he hated the 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 the, the, the brother. He lost his papa, namatay po si 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 Isaac, and then he also lost Rebecca, his mother, because the heart of Rebecca is always for the younger brother. Favorite po ni Rebecca si Jacob. And at the end, even Jacob, nakakaisa-isang pamilya na naiwan sa kanya, ay iniwan din siya. And you would know, Esau, how would Esau feel? And just like Esau, many of us is like Esau. Yeah? Marami po sa atin na nasaktan, marami po, within just inside our family, we have a lot of conflicts na nag dulot po ng sakit, nagsakit ng loob, nagdulot po ng, ng, ng loneliness sa atin, ng sadness, and we felt very alone. And this is how the conflict can result, can affect us in our lives, and it can destroy relationship. But in here, we will see how the Lord resolved this problem through forgiveness. Up dito po natin makikita in the life of Jacob in Genesis chapter 33 verse 1 to 9. Makikita po natin dito the journey kung paano na solve yung problema. So if you have your Bibles with you, I want you to open with me in Genesis chapter 33 verse 1 to 11. Okay, so sabi po dito Jacob looked up, and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, what's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, Please accept the present that was brought to you, for God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. So this is the story on how these two brothers reconciled. And Jacob, what is the meaning of Jacob? Jacob means grass. Okay? Whatever he wants, whatever blessing he wants, he can get it. Yeah, this is the favor ni Jacob, even to the point that he has to trick his brother, he was being blessed. You know, even nung siya po ay on the run, he was fleeing for his life and he went to the place of Laban kung saan po niya napangasawa si Rachel. At doon po siya nakaroon ng maraming asawa at maraming anak at maging sa foreign land na yon ay hindi po siya pinabayaan ng painon at pinagpala po siya. And he became very rich, that even the, yung, yung pag-aari ng kanyang father-in-law ay nakuha din po niya. Ganito po siya ka-bless. Ganito po siya pinagpala ng Panginoon. And that even, but even if Jacob have everything, 
he still has emptiness within him. Bakit? Dahil po sa hindi ma-reconcile na conflict niya sa kanyang kapatid. It was the time when God told Jacob to go back to their place. But he was very fearful. He was very fearful. Yeah, dahil nga po sa nangyari at dun po sa kanyang ginawa. But Jacob chose the way of reconciliation. Pinili po niya yung daan tungo po sa pagkaayos. That's why he was willing to go back dahil po kahit nandun na po, he has all the riches of the world. He has been very rich materially, even sa kamga anak and dahil po niyang anak and pamilya, pwede naman po hindi niya na po ayusin yung sigalot nila magkapatid. But Jacob has it in his heart. He wants to be reconciled sa kanyang kapatid. There is emptiness. And madalas madigat, mad, maging po sa bawat isa sa atin, para din po tayong tulad ni Jacob. Gaano man po taas ang ating ililipad, gaano man ka, ka, kalayo ang mararating natin, no matter who we become, how successful we become, if we were not able to reconcile our conflicts, kung meron po tayong gap within our families, if our relationships are broken, there is still this sadness. There is this loneliness. There is yung, yung emptiness sa ating mga puso. Wala pong fullness of joy. That's why today God is saying to us, we need to choose to forgive. We need to, like Jacob, walk in the path of reconciliation. We need to choose to forgive no matter what. Now, first point is that how can we be able to experience reconciliation in our lives? First point, apology leads to forgiveness. As words can destroy relationships and can offend us, words can also reconcile us. Amen? When we say we forgive you. First thing we need to understand, apology leads to forgiveness. Ito po yung ginawa ni Jacob. Alam niya na nakasala siya sa kanyang kapatid. Pwede namang hindi niya nabalikan dahil maayos na ang kanyang buhay. But Jacob went and went back in a mission to reconcile at mabdeal at maharap po niya ang problema niya sa kanyang kapatid. And so in here, we need to understand and learn from Jacob. Yeah? We need to understand this. Dahil po doon, kahit po, dahil po si Jacob at si Esau, meron po silang sigalot. They suffered for 20 years. Imagine mo yun, sila na lang nga ang naiwan sa mundong ibabaw. Hindi pa sila magkasama. And so he cannot see his brother. He cannot return to his home. This is the curse of the conflict sa family. No, hindi po siya makabalik sa kanilang bahay. He has to work in a foreign land like a servant to his father-in-law. Na kung saan yung father-in-law niya ay kaning din. Yeah? And nahirapan din po siya dun sa foreign land na yun. Why? Dahil nga po dun sa conflict nila magkapatid. At hindi po siya makabalik sa, kanila, sa kanilang lugar. But then, Jacob wants to still be reconciled sa kanyang kapatid. Maging sa ating sa ating mga buhay, we experience this. Pag may mga conflict sa ating mga bahay, minsan mararamdaman mo yan, pagpasok mo pa lang sa bahay. Wala nag-iimikan. Yun yung tinatawag nilang cold war. <laughs> Di ba? Mamaya may nagsas- nagsisigawan na World War I. Mamaya may lumilipad ng mga, mga, mga plato, mga unan, World War II. Di ba? So may mga level-level. And this is how conflicts If it's when we have this conflict and unforgiveness that the house will not be in peace. There will always be arg- arguments, there will always be conflict, marami pong misunderstanding sa bahay. But we need to learn to apologize like Jacob. Learn to apologize, especially if we are the ones who wronged the other party. We need to humble ourselves and apologize because apology leads to forgiveness. And this forgiveness can lead to re- can reconciliation. It's not, a matter of, it's not a matter of who's right or wrong. When we apologize, hindi po... 
It's not about kung tama ka o mali ka. Hindi kung sino ang kuya o bunso, sinong unang magsasorry. Meron ba kayo noon? Ikaw magpasorry kasi bunso ka. Do you have, we have that before. Yeah, wala kang galang nga. Sasagot-sagot mo na ako ha. Sometimes we have that. But you know, ang apology ay wala pong antag doon label. Yeah, walang it's not about your status, it's not about who did wrong or right. Bakit madalas walang apology, walang nare-reconcile sa isang relasyon dahil pataasan po ng pride. Yeah? Ikaw ang babae, mag-submit ka sa akin. You need to apologize. Aminin mong mali ka. Yeah? That's why yung babae naman, eh bakit ako? Kung ikaw ang ulo, ako ang leeg. Diba? Dapat sumunod ka sa akin. And madalas ito po yung nagiging dahilan na mas lalong yung maliit po na pinag-awayan lang, yung matabang na niluto ng asawa, umabot na yan sa, ikaw nga, hindi ka nagbigay ng sweldo mo nung kan. Alala mo, nung ikaw nangalunya, umabot na lahat na at na-excavate na po lahat ng mga kasalanan. Bakit? Dahil wala pong forgiveness. There was no reconciliation. In the family, marami pong sigalot, maraming away. Subalit, namamatay na lamang po iyon na hindi na pag-usapan. Namamatay na lang yun na parang okay na lahat. But deep inside them, the hurts and the memory remains. Amen? Bakit? Wala pong na-deal. Walang nag-apologize. Wala pong nag-forgive. Namatay na lang dahil ayaw nilang pag-usapan because they don't want conflicts in the family. But then again, brothers and sisters, how could we face conflict? And how can we remove the worms and the garbage from the family para po hindi po tayo maging historian knowing all, lahat ng mga pagkakamali nung magbo-boyfriend at mag-girlfriend pa lang sila, makakalkal nila. Ganyan ka noon eh. Diba? Eh yung pinag-awayan nila, kunting bagay lang naman ngayon. But because the conflicts were not being dealt it. Lumalaki, lumalaki po siya parang snowball because it was not melted. It was still there na pag mari nakakasala, it brings the memory back. At minsan ang hirap ng madil. That's why it's very important that we learn to forgive and we learn to apologize. We need to learn to apologize. And this is, it's under the tree of life. Learn to forgive. When we apologize, we need to learn kay Jacob. Okay? First sub-point is give a sincere apology. Give a sincere apology. Sa isang relasyon, sino po ang madalas magpasori? Unang magpasori sa inyo. Sa inyong dalawa. Sino? Yeah, there will always be someone in the relationship na siya yung unang nagsasorry. Siya din yung madalas magpasorry. Yeah, meron din yung ayaw. Gusto lang siya ang pinagsasorryhan. Yeah. Meron din yung mga man sutil sa pamilya, meron din yung nasusutil lang palagi. But you know, in when we apologize, we need to learn to apologize, really. And when we do it, it needs to be sincere. Pag nagpapasorry ba si Joel, ramdam mo, Joy? It means it's sincere. It should be a sincere apology. Dahil sa panahon ngayon, masyado nang nagasgas ang sorry. When people offended other people, sorry, tapos iirapan ka pa niya. Diba? We don't know if he's sorry or he's very sarcastic. But when we apologize, especially as Christians, brothers and sisters, we need to mean it, we need to be sincere in our apology. Yeah? Don't use our flesh. Sorry na, ikaw kasi eh. Sometimes ganun ah. When we say sorry, meron pa rin rationalization. Nandun pa rin yung flesh natin. Kung hindi mo kasi sana ginawa, hindi, hindi ako magagalit. Diba? Sorry na. Pero mag-sorry ka din sa akin. Diba? We have... Meron po tayong mga, ah, tawag doon? Dapat, or meron tayong mga condition. Eh? Conditional ang ating sorry. Magpapasorry ako kung, kung kan, magbabago ka na. O, oh, diba? Papatawarin kita kung magbabago ka na. But you know, apology has to be sincere. 
When we say sincere, it comes from the heart. It comes from the truth of God. It means we mean it. It's not from our pride. We should let our pride die when we apologize. Okay? Yung, yung, yung dapat ikaw ang magpasorry kasi ikaw ang mali eh. Di ba? But as Christians, it doesn't matter who's wrong or right. Again. Yeah? But to apologize and to be willing to forgive, it doesn't mean that you are wrong. Amen? It simply means you want the Lord to move in your relationship. You want the Lord to intervene in your relationship. When you apologize, it means you are willing to forgive. Yeah? And when you forgive, it means that you are willing for God to walk and work in your relationship. Yeah? It's not because you're wrong na naghingi ka or she's, he's wrong. Yeah? But it's about knowing that God can mend your relationship. And you don't want the enemy to have a foothold in your relationship. Kaya nga po, sabi ng Panginoon, do not let your anger na umabot hanggang kinamagahan. Dahil, the longer you keep your anger, the more the enemy will give negative thoughts in your mind. The more the enemy gagawin niyang snowball, yung pinag-awayan po ninyong asin, Bukas, ang dami ng mga issue yan. At marami ng nakakalkal. It's because no one wants to apologize. No one wants to forgive. So we need to give a sincere apology. We see here in verse 1 to 3, Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children and he put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. Nung si, nung si Jacob po nakita niya yung kanyang kapatid, what he did was to humble himself. Bow down for seven times. We need to know that Jacob has the blessing. Yeah? He's supposed to be the head. And Esau is his servant. But because he was apologizing, in his sincerity, he bowed down for seven times. And this bowing down is only to be given to the emperors. Yeah? Pero ganun na lamang po ibinaba ni, ni, ni Jacob ang kanyang sarili sa kanyang kapatid to apologize. It's to sincerely say, I want to apologize. And he, he begins to say that you, I am your servant. You are my Lord. Makita po natin yan. Yeah, sabi po niya. So verse 5, Jacob answers, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. And in verse 8, To find favor in your eyes, my Lord. And he considered Esau as Lord. And he considered himself, himself as a Servant. And this is how, how Jacob showed his sincerity sa kanyang kapatid. Kung paano siya po mag-apologize. We need to be like him. We need to lower down our pride. We need to lower down ourselves. Understand sincerely how we hurt them badly. Yeah? When we say sorry, don't say sorry na lumalabas lang po sa ilong. Sige, sorry na, pero ikaw pa galit. ba? Sorry na, pero dapat ganyan, no? When we say sorry, o, oh, yan na, meron nang nagkakan, o, oh, mali daw yung sorry niya. <laughs> when we say sorry, know what you are sorry for. What am I saying? When we say sorry, don't just say sorry. You need to say it and mean it in your heart and say kung ano yung ginawa mong mali. Don't just say sorry. You just you need to say and specify what you did. Kasi marami pong nagpapasorry pero hindi po nila naiintindihan kung ano nga bang ba ginawa nila. Kasi nagpasorry lang sila para okay na. Pero they did not see yung mistake nila. They are not taking responsibility of what they have done. Nagpasorry lang sila para masabing may nagpasorry. But when we say sorry, we need to be sincere. What are you sorry for? I'm sorry because I 
raise my voice against you. I'm sorry because I disrespect you. I supposed to respect you, but I did not say. Why? Do you, don't just say sorry. No, ano yung ano yung ginawa mo? I'm sorry. I I broke your trust. I I entered in other relationship, and I treat you. Na parang wala lang. I treat you badly. You need to describe. You need to know how they feel. Hindi yung sorry lang. Because in there, there's no repentance at all. You have to describe how you feel. Say sorry. Know why you're sorry. Amen? At wag po ganun kababa when you say sorry. You know, in, in this church, we always have this deep repentance and confession. That's why in the time ng ating atonement, you would see how we confess. We confess to the point that we lose our face. We lose all our pride. And it's the same thing when we say sorry to that other person. When we hurt them. We go lower and say sorry. That's why in the couples, in the couples, we need to do this. Couples should not just say sorry. Say what you did. Say how, how you badly hurt your partner and recognize their feelings. Don't rationalize or blame them. Ginawa ko lang naman yun. Kasi Kwan, hindi mo na ako naalagaan. No. Do not defend your mistake. Do not defend. Look at Jacob. Pwede niyang sabihin, hindi ko naman yun... Sana gagawin eh. I was just pushed by my, our mother, Rebecca. That is the truth. It was Rebecca, siya po yung mastermind. Sumunod lang si Jacob. Pero hindi niya po sinabi yun. Hindi na po siya nagrason-rason. But all he did, he took all the responsibility and said, sorry. I am so sorry. And same is true in our lives. Even as couples, even in the cell groups, you know, even in our cell group, even if I am a leader, I still say sorry. And you can ask it to my disciples. I say sorry. Even if they had done wrong, I still have to say sorry. Because it's the only way that the relationship can be reconciled. It's the only way that forgiveness can come out. You need to let loose of your pride. Kill the pride. And be sincere when you say sorry. Humble yourself. Don't be very shallow when you, see, when you apologize. And also, don't expect immediate acceptance. Oh, nag-sorry na ako sa'yo, ha? Oh, bakit di mo, na ako, di mo pa rin ako pinapansin? Sometimes we do this. We say sorry kasi we want I demand natin, dapat tanggap na nila. But you know, we need to understand they are being hurt. And if we say sorry all over again, let's do that. And I just remember my papa, kasi he always say sorry. Yeah, there are, there are wounds that cannot be easily be repaired, cannot be easily be fixed. But the thing is, when you apologize, it means you let go. It means you don't want the enemy to have a foothold. And you allow the Holy Spirit to come in in the relationship. Dahil kung may sigalot, kung pareho pong galit, parehong walang gustong magparaya, panalo po ang kaaway. But if someone lays down himself, humble himself, it brings an opening for God to move in the relationship. But if both has hatred, both have unforgiveness, the Holy Spirit cannot move. But once one will apologize, humble, or one learns to forgive, you allow the Holy Spirit, allow God's love to reign and come in and deal with your relationship. And you will see Miracles will happen. God can change the heart of that person. 
God can change the heart of that person. We need to give a sincere apology. Know how to communicate. Amen? Don't let yung, yung conflict, yung pinag-awayan na namatay na lang. Yeah? Kung ayaw nyo po na lumaki yung conflict ninyo. Every conflict that arises, you have to deal with it. Do not escape. Do not escape. Marami pong mga relasyon, hindi po ganun lumalalim, hindi po nag-grow, hindi nagmamature. Kahit po magkapatid, kahit mag-asawa, matagal na po sila sa relasyon na yon, matagal na po sila sa isang bahay, pero tinawag lang silang pamilya by apelido. But in their relationship, they're not family. Why? Wala pong napag-uusapan. There's no deep relationship. And so the family, punong-puno ng sama ng loob, punong-puno ng lahat. And even parents, don't say that we are parents, that our children does not deserve our sorry. Parents must also say sorry if they think they have done wrong. Say sorry. Amen? And so that is one thing that we need to learn. <clears throat> From Jacob, kung paano po siya sincere, gaano po ka sincere nag-apologize si Jacob. Second point, second small point, give an ample compensation. Bago po nakarating at nakita ni Jacob si Isao, pinauna niya po ang ano? Verse chapter thirty-two, Genesis chapter thirty-two, verse fourteen. Sabi po dito, a verse 13, 32 verse 13, sabi niya, He spent the night there and from what he had with him, he selected a gift for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls and 20 female donkeys and 10 male Male donkeys. At ganito pa karami yung compensation ni Jacob. Pinauna niya po ito, binigay kay Esau to say how sorry he is. He is willing to pay the price. He is willing to give what he has. And you know, he gave this compensation. So that means that do not just say sorry. Do not just use your words. But do extra effort to compensate your mistake. Yeah? That's why in the relationship, lalo sa mag-aasawa, wag lang sabing sorry. Baka pwede ka rin namang magluto. Diba? Baka pwede mo namang aliwin pag nakamali ka. You can give flowers. Yeah? Nung nag-boyfriend, girlfriend kayo, ganyan kayo eh. Pero nagsipag-asawa na, wala na. Ang arte-arte mo naman. We're not sorry na nga ako sa'yo. But you know, this is something we learn from Jacob. Even sa mga magkakapatid. Yeah? We need to give an ample compensation. When you say ample compensation, hindi konti yan. Nakita nyo yung bigay ni Jacob? Halos binigay niya na lahat ng na-acquire niya. This is how sincere Jacob was. He humbled himself and he gave gifts. Itong gifts na ito, it means blessing. It means, yung binigay po niya, these are the things na kinuha po niya kay Isaw. Yung blessing na sana kay Isaw, na kinuha niya because of his trickery, ay binalik po niya. He was willing to give it back. Because he was sincere, he wants to say sorry, he wants to compensate the loss, yung hurts na binigay niya sa kanyang kapatid. So we, in our time today, we need to also give back what we took. Give gifts. I'm not saying na oh, mag, dapat bonggang-bonggang mga gifts. But what I'm saying is that we need to give extra effort. Extra, extra effort. 
And that is one thing I admired sa, sa Papa namin. He's always saying sorry. But it doesn't end from saying sorry. He tries his best to always to get our heart. To get our heart. Na minsan dahil dun, more than dun sa sorry niya, mas ang nagme-melt sa puso namin yung work niya. Yung ginagawa niya actually. It's not his words. Yung words niya kasi parang paulit-ulit na lang sa amin. Hmm. Sabi niya na naman niya, sorry, sorry, tapos gagawin niya na naman ulit. But when he does something, doon nagme-melt yung pusa namin. Yung tipang kahit malinis na damit namin, labahan ko na yung damit mo, anak. And we had, this, this is how he sincerely apologized sa atin, to us. You know, ito po yung nakita natin kay Jacob. And we need to learn from him. To say sorry is we need to be sincere. Meron kasi yung managpapasorry. Pero minsan, dahil hindi pa fully healed yung puso ng mga nasaktan nila, nandun pa rin na they can move or speak in a way na nakakasakit dun din sa nagpapasorry. E minsan, ang sasabihin nung, nung unang nag, nagkamali, nagpasorry na nga ako eh, ganyan ka pa? No. If you have to say sorry all your life hanggang ikaw ay patawarin niya, you have to do it. It means we are sincere. Hindi yung pag hindi ka pinatawad agad, but gagawin ko na lang ako anong gusto ko. Nag-sorry na ako eh. This are, you know, is a mindset. Is our mindset. Pag hindi tinanggap ang sorry natin, gawin na lang natin yung pinapagawa sa, you know, gawin ko na lang. Hindi mo pala ako matanggap eh. Wala ding sense na nagpa-sorry ako. No. Saying sorry is willing to wait. Saying sorry is having the faith that God will Turn the heart of that person you have hurt until he can willing to forgive you. And you see, when you learn to say sorry and apologize sincerely, forgiveness will come. Forgiveness will come. What happened? What happened? Dito po nakita po natin, but Esau ran to meet Jacob. Esau, in verse 4, ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw him his arms around his neck and kissed him and they wept. Tingnan mo kung paano ni receive ni Esau si Jacob. He doesn't even want to accept the gifts dahil maging kahit wala po po yung gift pinatawad na ni Esau. Si Jacob. Nakita ni Isao kung paano sincere yung apology ng kanyang ading, ng kanyang kapatid. And he wept. Bakit po umiyak si Isao? Have you feel yung loneliness ni Isao? 20 years because of the conflict, they didn't talk. They didn't have connections. At madalas in our time today, these are the story. This is the face of many family. Minsan isang bahay po tayo. Nagkaroon na ng pamilya. Pero yung away natin nung bata tayo, nung kinain ni kuya, yung pagkain ni ading, damdam pa rin po natin, paglaki natin. And so the younger, younger na kapatid, kailangan dapat mas magaling siya. Dapat mas mayaman siya kasi naaagawan siya eh. Sometimes that's how things goes in the family. There's too much hurt. There's no understanding and deep relationship sa family. Kaya nung makina lang po sila na ganun, magkapatid sila, mag-asawa sila, but they don't know each other's heart. They didn't learn to face their conflicts. They didn't release forgiveness. Kaya yung conflict po nila, dala-dala po yan, nagsipag-asawa sila. Minsan, pag nag-aaway-aaway na may kampihan na. Bakit? Dahil dun sa mga lamat. Dahil dun sa mga, mga broken na relationship nila when they were young. But we need to learn to apologize. And learn to ask forgiveness. Bakit po natin sinasabi ito? Hindi yung yung apologize sincerely and 
do ample compensation. This is not the thing that we need to desire to require for those people who apologize to us. No, this is for us to learn. Amen? When we learn to apologize, we do this. We don't expect them to do this to us because they, they are unbelievers. They do not know about what we're talking right now. But this is what we require to ourselves. When we apologize, do this. But do not ask your partner. Do not ask other people who have hurt you. Mag-apologize ka sa akin, ha? Dapat sincere, dapat ganito. No. This is what we do as Christians. It starts from us. Amen? So, we have to learn to apologize and forgive. Because forgiveness brings reconciliation and blessings. It is when they are willing to forgive that the relationship has been re restored and has been reconciled. Kaya nakita po natin dito, when Esau accepted Jacob, when Esau embraced, naiyak ako bigla dun sa, dun sa sin na yun. And I don't know, it's because maybe you will feel yung loneliness ni Esau, mag-isa po siya. And finally, his brother came home. Kung hindi nangyari yung conflict na yun, they would have been happy together. Together. That's why ma ma-feel ko yung, yung heart ni Isao. And what happens when Isao learned to forgive and Jacob learned to apologize in sincerity, their relationship has been reconciled and they were blessed beyond measure. They were blessed. The whole family has been blessed. So what happens? Jacob was able to return sa kanilang bahay. And he was able to stand and live dun po sa minana po nila sa kanilang mga magulang. He was able to return and have a peaceful relationship with Esau. And this is the blessing when we learn to apologize, when we learn to Forgive, release forgiveness. Rather than dwelling in their shortcomings. Pag may sigalot, may away sa pamilya. Rather than looking at the mistakes, we need to look farther. We need to look at what they did good in our lives. Minsan po kasi madaling maalala ang pagkakamali. Pero ang mga kabutihan, Sa dami ng ginawa mo, minsan hindi naaalala. Amen? But whenever we've been of, we are being offended by our family member, by our workmates, we need to always recall the good things that they did. Do not let one mistake ruin yung relationship nyo, na inalagaan nyo, minaintain ninyo, and then let just one mistake ruin it. We need to learn to forgive. How many times? Sabi ni Lord, 70 times? Seven. O bahala ka na mag-compute mag dun. Sa isang tao lang yun na. We need to forgive endlessly. Wala pong depth, wala pong, wala pong, ang tag dito, condition. When we learn to forgive, we learn to forgive because we choose to forgive. It's not because this person changed. Your forgiveness cannot change other people. It will not change them kung sila nangalun niya at forgive mo sila. It doesn't mean, it doesn't give you an assurance na hindi na sila mangalun niya. If that one person told you lies, when you forgive them, doesn't mean they will not lie again. They are humans. Amen? They can do it again, but we can choose to forgive. Bakit? We're doing this for ourselves. We don't want, we don't want to harbor hatred. Hurts in our hearts. Because when we do this, hindi lang po sila ang nahirapan, maging tayo. Even us. So the whole relationship is being cursed. But when we learn to forgive, there be reconciliation. And how we need to do this, we need to humble ourselves. And God is our great model. God showed us the way to forgive. When the whole world 
rejected Him. When the whole world ignored God and sinned against God, who did the first move? Is it man? No, it's God. God did not sin against man. God has no shortcoming. God has not done anything wrong. But He was the one willing to make and do the first move. And He even made the greatest sacrifice of the lifetime. It's sacrificing His own child na walang kasalanan. Letting His Son suffer so that we as sinners, we who did the mistakes, who are wicked, can be reconciled to Him. And this is how God modeled and displayed true forgiveness. Hindi dahil nagbago ang tao na minahal tayo ng Painon at pinatawad niya tayo. Bago pa man tayo nagbago, bago pa man tayo humingi ng tawad at nagbalik loob, pinatawad niya tayo. And He is willing to receive us, accept us, and He did not give up on us. Well, same is true in our family, in our workplaces, in your relationship as a husband and wife. Do not wait for the other person to say sorry. If you are being touched, if you are the child of God, then be the first one. Be the first one to say sorry. You know, na-experience ko po yan sa Hong Kong. Meron din po akong nakakonflict dun. And he's always napapahiya ako whenever he does something, he says something, hanggang sa dumating po sa point na hindi ko na nakayanan. I have to confront her. When we confront, ako ang nag-say sorry. Ako ang nag-say sorry. And it's because when I apologize, even if I did not do anything wrong, forgiveness came in. Grace, reconciliation came in. It can melt eh, even the hardest heart. When someone learns to apologize, God can touch their heart. God can touch their hearts. And we need to walk in this path of righteousness. This is the heart of God. This is the heart ng Panginoon. Ayaw niya na mahirapan kayo. Sino bang natutuwa pag may kaaway? Anak, siguro ng demonyo yun talaga. But you know, kahit ka nga stranger, ah, na hindi natin kakilala pag nakaaway natin, masakit ang loob natin, di ba? Minsan ang hirap natin tanggalin, minsan nagkakasakit pa tayo. This is true. What causes illness, sickness, and diseases? It's because of relationships. Mga sama ng loob. Bakit may cancer? Bakit may arthritis? Bakit po may heart problem? It's because of unforgiveness. This is, akala po nila smoking, ganun ang number one na kumikitil ng buhay ng tao, no. The truth is unforgiveness. And I saw that. I saw that in Hong Kong. We did the inner healing and deliverance. Yung mga kababayan po natin doon, they really struggled. Ang dami po naming sapak sa kanila. Nagmamanifest po sila. Alam nyo kung anong spirit yung lumalabas sa kanila? It's the spirit of unforgiveness. The hatred they hold on to for their long life. They've been raped by their own father. But they have to go abroad and sustain the father. Sustain po yung rapist po nila. So there is so much unforgiveness in their hearts. Mga OFW, nangarap, nagsakripisyo para sa kanilang pamilya, binibigay lahat, ultimo Sunday, rumaraket, para lang maipadala yung para sa subject and predicate ng mga anak. Pero yung mga anak, apo kung agdedate, akala mo ang yayaman. Yung nanay nga nila, hindi makahawak ng cellphone kasi bawal. Pero yung mga anak, social sa probinsya. Magpa-birthday, ipaungutang lahat na ng nanay. At the end, yun, hindi pa nakatapos, nakabuntis na o nabuntis na. Yung iba, nag-addict na lang. Yung asawa nila, nang, nak, 
sa kabilang bahay. You see, when we had that inner healing and deliverance, I more understand. There's so much hate in their hearts. But they have to still be enslaved abroad to feed these people. These people who does not appreciate yung hard work po nila. So what happens in the church? Pag time ng inner healing, nako, kailan mo alaksan. Isang tao lang, pito kaming maghahawak. Why? Grabe po yung manifestation. Nagwawala po talaga sila. Hindi po enough ang isang araw para is madil ang, ang unforgiveness spirit. And this caused them a lot of problem. My mom also died the same. She had a lot of problem. And many, many parents, many children din, ang daming mga sakit at karamdaman It's not because of what they eat. It's not about their lifestyle. But because of the unforgiveness within them that is killing them softly. That's why if you are sick today, try to reflect and pray. Have you been holding to some hurts and hatred in your life? Do you have this unforgiveness? You need to confess and repent because it can take your life. It can bring death in your relationship and even physically, it can kill you. That's why napaka-importante po ang topic natin sa araw na ito. I suppose to change the series, but I believe God wants us to receive this message. It is always the heart of God that men be reconciled to Him as a God. How much more in your family? God wants you to be reconciled with one another. Wag po nating antayin na mamatay ang isa at mabuhay sa regret yung naiwan dahil hindi na reconcile dahil walang nagpasori walang nag-forgive. Huwag po nating antayin na mamatay ang parents natin bago tayo humingi ng sorry o bago tayo mag-apologize. Huwag po nating antayin na dumating sa point ang mga relationship natin sa pamilya, magkakapatid man in the workplace, na dahil po sa maliliit na bagay, dahil po sa mga conflict problema na hindi naayos. Dala-dala po natin yung paglaki hanggang sa point na nagpapatayan po tayo. Problems that has not been dealt with. I've been watching crime series and documentaries. And whenever they show the life ng mga killers, nung mga rapists. Because we want to understand why there are these kinds of people. You know why? nag emerge ang mga taong ganito. Because there is unforgiveness. They were also hurt. Mga magulang, they rejected their children, abused them, physically abused them, sexually abused them. But they did not apologize. So the children grew up with all this hatred and they cannot forgive these people. So what happens? Yung galit po nila na ibubuntong po nila sa iba. That's why there are serial killers. Serial killers, they've been physically abused. They've been sexually abused. Mga manloloko ngayon, naloko din sila. That's why we believe hurt people hurt people. Bakit po sila nananakit ng tao dahil sila din ay nasaktan at walang humingi ng tawad. Walang walang forgiveness and it starts where in the family. Kung akala po natin ganun lang kababaw, ay nako. 
yung usapan na yan, parang ang arte-arte naman yan, parang OA naman yan. Kinain ko lang naman yung pagkain niya. Sinumbong ko lang naman siya. These are small conflicts na paglaki po ng mga anak, they don't have trust sa bawat isa. And you know, even for us here and online, may mga bagay na we think like, even in the inner healing and deliverance, anong gusto mo na patawarin? What is your hurt sa iyong parents? In the beginning, they will say, wala. Ang galing nga, perfect ang ma- mother ko. But when we minister to them, nagmamanifest sila. Why? Dahil pinatay na lang yung issue. But the hurts, the memories are there. Hindi nga lang na deal. So feeling nila, walang problema. Pero every time, there's even just a little problem that arise in the family. It becomes so big. So big. That's why, brothers and sisters, today, as we come before God's presence, let us come with that desire to deal, face these problems, face this conflict. If you were the one who did something wrong, and I believe we all did that, we all have that, we hurt people around us somehow. Learn to apologize. Learn to apologize. If people also hurt us, even in the most unimaginable way, na feeling po natin hindi po yun kapatapatawan, think about God. Think about God. Think about Jesus who has been rejected He's what he suffered on the cross. He's been mocked. Na experience na lahat. But on the cross, Jesus said, "Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing." Brothers and sisters, today, let us not look on the hurts, but we look at Jesus on how Jesus was willing to cross the hurts and the pains and is willing to forgive, let us do the same. Today, let us all rise up. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we just ask for your presence today on site and even in every home right now god we just ask for your grace ask for your mercy father we just need you may your holy spirit come inside us come upon us right now god we just want to let go and surrender all this hurt all this pain in our hearts lord we just want to surrender and let go lord all this painful past that we have Lord the words that have hurt us Lord the words that has defined us Lord we just want to let go of these experiences that we have experienced and let pray that your Holy Spirit come upon us today let's just close our eyes You know, this is your personal, so personal. Speak to God. Speak to God. And help. Allow God to work. Touch you. Touch you, Jesus. Maybe some of you here you have been hurt by your parents by their words your parents may have compared you 
they have given you so much pressure. Some were cheated by their trusted friends. And that as you grow up, you struggle to gain, to give trust. Trust to people. In your relationship, you have experienced this abuse in words. You've been abused physically. Maybe when you were young, you got rejected by your parents. You grew up on your own. Today, I want you to search your heart. Search your heart. Why there's deep sadness inside you today. Why you have some issues when you are angry. You just got so angry and you cannot control yourself. Painful memories that you choose to forget. But it controls you today. It controls you today. Today, ask the Holy Spirit. Speak. Speak to you. Or maybe some of us here, we've done wrong with other people. But we cannot accept our mistakes. We cannot take the courage to ask for forgiveness, to apologize. Because we are afraid. We are afraid. Are they going to accept it? Will the relationship be still be there? Will they understand me? Were they willing to forgive? Today, the Lord says, overcome your fear. Put down your pride. God is a God of grace and He's here to heal you. He's here to heal you. He knows all your pains. He knows all your hurts. God says, do not dwell in your hurts. God doesn't want you to suffer. God doesn't want you to suffer. The Lord says, let go. Let go. And let the healing power of God come upon you. Today you can just cry out to God and speak to God. Lord, this is unfair. All your hurts. All the things you feel. Why I experience it. Why, Lord, why you give me such a parent? Why you allow me to experience these things? Today, I want you to cry out to God. Cry out to God. Today, I want you to just close your eyes. And receive the healing. Yeah, let just me cut the sing. Today, deal with your heart. And ask God to touch you right now. Weeping in the darkness. 
feeling so alone feeling so alone and his child is weeping so hard and as the child grows he stays in the same place the same sadness the same hurts the same darkness even when he withdraws in his sleep he keeps on crying because of this hurts past hurts past hurts when he was young today pray may the Lord reveal it to him what are the things that you have not dealt with in your life Maybe your colleagues have hurt you by their words. I want you to open your feelings to God. Or maybe you have hurts and you hate God. And you ask, Lord, why? Why I have to have this kind of family why I have to go through this pain why why Lord Father today we just come before you and Lord we just lift up to you my brothers and sisters Father you know their pain You know the things that they have gone through. Hurts that has been so long, years. Hurts and pains when we were young. We grow with them. We cannot understand ourselves, but it's just, there's something in us that whenever we relate to people, in our relationship, we just simply has problem. Problems with our relationship arise. We don't know how to have this good relationship with other people. Father, today we ask that may you help us. Help us. We were still living in this pain. If we're still holding on to this pain. Father, today we surrender. Today we give it all to you, God. And may we ask for your Holy Spirit to come upon us, to heal us, heal your people, heal your people. Father, we cannot change the past. But God, we know that you are the God of the past and you are the God of the present and the future. And that you can deal with it. You can, you can heal it so that we can face our present. We can face the future. Father, today I ask for your mercy. May your healing touch come upon them right now. And may you release forgiveness. Release healing and forgiveness. Release forgiveness. Today, if as we pray, I want you to imagine the face of those people who have hurt you. The only way that the blessing can come in a relationship, reconciliation will come. Is that when we learn to forgive. When we learn to forgive. And we learn to apologize. First, we just pray and ask for forgiveness for God for harboring all these negative feelings. I want you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I ask for forgiveness. I repent that because of my pain, because of my past experience, 
I am not willing to forgive. Lord, I kept all the hurts. I kept all the hatred. That God, even in my relationship, I bring it with me. Lord, I don't want to surrender all these negative feelings. Lord, today I ask that you forgive me. Cleanse me. Help me to lay it all down. Help me to trust in your healing. Help me to trust in you, God. Help me to cling on to your love. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you help me. Give me the courage today to forgive. Give me the courage to forgive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Today, as we pray continually, I want you to imagine that person have hurt you. Maybe your parents, maybe a partner, or someone you knew who have hurt you in words, in their actions. Today, I want you to pray and speak their name. Speak their name. I want you to pray with me. Father, today, God, you know how I feel. You know all the pains that I have. But I'm willing to surrender it to you. Lord, tonight, I open my heart. And I release forgiveness. Say the name. I forgive him. I release your forgiveness upon him. Just as you have forgiven me for my sin, I'm willing to let go of the pain, let go of the words, all the hurts that he caused me. Lord, today, I take away all the curse that I uttered unto him. I take, Lord, all the negative words and the negative thoughts I thought about Him. And Lord, today I ask that may Your healing power come upon Him. May Your blessings come upon Him. Lord, I pray right now, I renounce and I cut all the negative soul ties I have with this person. Even the curses I utter upon Him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and I just claim reconciliation, forgiveness. Change my heart towards this person. Lord, I pray as I put my hope upon you, may you fix my relationship with him. Bless him. Bless him, O oh Lord. May you release your blessings upon his life. Then may you also bless me. Help me, God. That as I continue to learn to forgive and release blessing to the people who have hurt me, Father, I pray that may you give me the courage. Help me, Lord, to move on. Help me, Father, to live a joyful life in peace in your promise. Peace, God, because, Father, you reconcile us. And we know that you are the God who can fix our relationship. And so, Lord God, right now, I leave all to you. Panginoon, lahat ng aming relasyon. Lahat, Panginoon, ng aming relationship in our family, with our parents, with our siblings. God, even in our workplaces. Father, we just invite your presence to come. Lord, us. Father, that may you reign and be the center in our relationship. Let your healing power come upon our relationship. Lord, give us the courage. Give us the courage to learn to forgive. Give us the courage and the boldness to learn to face conflicts, to deal with our conflicts, to know how to deal with our hurts. Father, we just invite your grace and your love to come upon every heart right now. And may you heal us completely and bless every relationship that we have. Lord God, may we set our eyes on your sacrifice. Just as you have humbled yourself to reconcile us unto you. Father, may we also be like you to choose the path of reconciliation. The path of forgiveness, God. To let go of all these negative thoughts. To let go of all our negative feelings. Father, and give them a flesh, the heart of flesh 
and give them a new heart give them a fresh memory give them lord god the joy that comes from you give them peace in their relationship father i thank you i thank you right now thank you father though we thank you for god we know beginning today we will learn to embrace the weakness panginoon ng bawat isa and we will choose to look at the beautiful things on these people no matter father how we may be provoked no matter how we've been hurt by them but god we will choose to see the good things that they have just as you have done it to us father we thank you i bless everyone in this room right now i bless everyone who has forgiven I bless everyone who is watching right now. Take full control of their relationship. God, ikaw pa inoon ang magayos. Ikaw pa inoon ang maglagay ng lahat sa tamang kinalalagyan. And may you help them to be a source of reconciliation. Through them, Panginoon, anumang relationship ang kanilang papasukin. Panginoon, kaya po nila na magpatawad kaya po nila to embrace ang bawat isa. Because God, your love is reigning in their hearts. Your peace is upon them. Your grace and mercy is upon them. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word today. At hayaan mo, Painoon, na panghawakan po namin ito. Kung paano mo po inayos ang matagal na sigalot ni Jacob at Esau, even today we know. Whatever, Painoon, broken relationships we have, we declare restoration we declare reconciliation father we thank you guard our hearts lord protect our family from any works and wiles of the enemy i bless everyone father that may the blessings that comes through their obedience father as they're willing to forgive be upon them lord we thank you we praise you this we pray in jesus name amen God bless po sa lahat. And so today, I give you a, an assignment. If you have this a person in your life that maybe you feel like meron kayong unfinished business sa isa't isa, you just try to ask for forgiveness. Apologize. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or you were right, but make a way. You make and maybe text them, call them, send a card. But the most important thing is that we do the first move. Amen. We do the first move. Pati mga umutang sa atin na hindi nagbabayad. Yeah. So, God bless po sa lahat. And may the grace of the Lord be with us and lead us sa bawat relationship natin. God bless po.